He has got less than oh, 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 my word! Never seen anything like it! I cannot believe that! Hello and welcome to Columbus, Ohio on the Arnold Sports Festival for World Chase Tag's Pan American Championships. We are focusing today on Group A action. Please ready! Jonathan Alfonseca starting off for so flow. He goes under the mountain as Joe Onra tries to track him down. He's not making a move as yet. And Jonathan Alfonseca just doing laps around the corner. There's a reach through the ridge there. Joe Onra, he waited, he waited. He saw a moment, he took the chance. Such a solid dive through there from Joe. You've got to love to see that. But at the same time, Jonathan has to be ready for that. All these athletes are getting so good at these threats. Athletes ready! Joe Onra looking to get the first point on the board at this year's Pan American Championship as he waits and waits and waits and Tony Roth, the team captain, does make a move and has the tag been made? Yes, it has. Just caught him on the shoulder. Looked like he was wasting time quite so nicely so there but when the he made the move, couldn't quite, quite duck under it. That nice was just an amazing chase. job from Thanks Tony there. The he creeped the up chase. on the Still ledge, zero. getting into the tilted cube. He was very, very patient and that's how he got that tag. Ten seconds! Chase three, so flow evading, zero all. Athletes ready! Our first look at Kai Baldwin from Sydney, Australia. This guy is a celebrity, not just for his athleticism. He's been to the semi-finals of Australia's Got Talent. He's been in opera and musicals. He can sing, he can dance, he can tag, and he makes the tag of Tony Roth by the mountain. Absolutely incredible from Kai. I thought maybe there was a little bit of nerves there when he first didn't go through the ridge here, but he got set up for that trap and executed perfectly down under the mountain. Athletes ready! Raul Muniz with a little shake and a shimmy on the starter's play, and then not a particularly explosive start, but he just closes down that gap and then makes a move, and Kai Baldwin can't get on the get way under the mountain. All right, now here is where things get interesting. Raul gets that very, very fast spike tag here. He catches him going under the mountain, just hits him before he can stand back up. Now he's going to have stamina to try to get this evasion. Athletes ready! Jordan Ehrenberg, one of the fines for this Tempest team, last time out of the US Championship. He is so long. It's just limbs. They go on for days. But can he reach out and grab Raul? He doesn't there. The ref says no. And round by the front line, he's going to have the pace here, Raul. But can he get away from that arm? Yes, he can. And this might be the first point. Raul Muniz gets so flow on the ball. Sean Ehrenberg, an incredible so tagger, but couldn't lay a glove on him. Incredible work from Raul. Like I said, he had the stamina. He was ready to go. Athletes ready! So, Raul Muniz gets them on the board. Soflo lead by one. He bounces into that bar and pushes off. You can see what he's trying to do. Didn't quite work out. I did like the idea, but yeah, when you cut back there and you have Joe Unruh barreling down center, he's going to get you every time. Athletes ready! Tempest Trail, they're the number five seeds. This would be a surprise if they don't kick off with a win against the Floridian team. As Josh Vigo comes in, and Josh Vigo hurting him into this open corner where there's not much to hide behind. So Textbook stop. You nailed it. Josh doing perfect hurting right here. Putting on the pressure and then cutting to the center, catching Joe in that perfect corner. It's so unpleasant to be there. Athletes ready! Before we got going, Joey, our expert, said, look out for this kid, Kai. He is something special. We've not seen it just yet in this chase, but that was impressive, right? That is the trap right there. That's the loading base trap. You get one leg on each side. They cannot go under the mountain. They cannot cut back. They have to do something special to get away from you from that trap. Athletes ready! A roar from the Tempest team as they look to get back in this one. Jonathan Alfonseca looking to preserve SoFlo's lead as Kai Baldwin goes all the way across the crop. And he's a little bit too quick for Jonathan Alfonseca, and that is saying something, because this guy is rapid. Nice foot movement from Jonathan to keep the chase going, but he's not cutting down the space, and he doesn't come in through the ridge. And Kai might get away with this. He jukes out of the way of that. And Kai Baldwin with his first chase tag point levels this game up. Athletes ready! Gabriel Torres coming in for SoFlo. Our first look at him. 
Apparently he likes mangoes and hair. The second one pretty evident. But Kai Baldwin, this lad looks like he's got a skill set. A little hopping around. Oh, nice list. Sends him one way. Bounces off the sisters. Under the ridge. Can he keep that distance? Oh, the time was running out. I reckon less than two seconds he had to go for back-to-back -back evasions. Just got the tag. That was absolute incredible work, and it shows experience from Kai. When he comes around here, you can tell his legs are just starting to give out on him. He doesn't have the stamina. Tempest is going to have to send out some of their fresh legs, I think. Athletes ready! Really interesting that we're yet to see Hunter Mendoza, one of the stars of this Tempest team. They have leveled the match up, but this is still tight. A Joe Honor stumbling somehow keeps his footing. Oh my god, I do not know how he stayed up right there, Joe. That was so close to going down. Just got caught on that diagonal bar. He does keep chasing. Now, usually this chase here is actually bad, but he knew he was so close he could put on the gas and get the tag. Incredible work from Joe Onra. It remains one apiece. We're into the 12th chase here. It is tight. 12. Raul Muniz sets off. He's the man who put Soflo in the lead. They have been pegged back. Joe Onra, they've relied heavily on him, this Tempest team. He ducks under the bridge, goes around the front line. Raul Muniz is right Ooh. behind him, and he cannot get away. I really like that route that he took there. He went up high and descended on him towards the loading bay. From there, it was just a foot race, and he was able to catch up. Athletes ready! They've waited. Now they unleash him. He is quick. He is lethal. And look at the way he moves through all those obstacles. He is right behind Raul, and it always felt like the tag was coming. It was a case of win. Absolutely. And I had Hunter as the team's MVP before Kai came on. He still might be. Chase 14. Tempest evading. One all. Athletes ready! We're now at the stage of this match where one slip, one mistake could mean the difference between success and defeat. Hunter waits and then goes and Tony Wolf waited and then managed to get him. Patience truly does pay off, especially when you're sitting on that bar on the loading bay. You just got to wait for them to make a decision first. It does mean that the Florida Chase team have a chance again. to win this right Chase now. Chase 15, so flow evading. Match point, so flow. Athletes ready! Sean Nirenberg uncharacteristically evaded earlier in the match. It cannot happen again or Tempest right, lose. Right. He is not going to be quick, but if he can get within striking distance, it is almost impossible to stay away from those ma massive telescopic arms. But the minute Tony Roth is staying away, look at this, and he dies! Oh! And has he made contact? He has made contact, he's claiming it. Tony's not sure, the refs have given it, but there's not much in that. I was holding my breath that whole time. Let's see if he gets it here. Dives over, maybe just barely the tips of his fingernail. If that guy had trimmed his fingernails this morning, he does not make that tag. Chase 16, Tempest evading. Match point, Tempest. Athletes ready! So, it swung around and Tempest can win it if Sean, who's just had a draining chase, can evade Michaela. The only woman competing in the open tournament here. And Michaela, oh, look at that! Really, really good. Just kept in close attendance. And in the end, he had nowhere to go. We're going all the way to sudden death here. Oh, this is way too exciting here. Michaela goes up, takes the high route, drops into the loading bay. And I saw her in practice. She was working on her threading, and it was looking amazing. Wow. First game of the Pan American Championships. We are going to sudden death. Now it matters about how long the evasion is. Both teams sending someone to evade. The other team gets to pick who chases them, and it's who lasts longest. This, Joey, what's the psychology down there like in the, in the teams at the minute? Well, there's a couple things you got to think about. Honestly, Tempest has a couple athletes they never sent out. That being said, it looks like Kai is coming back on for the third or fourth time. Well, Kai is the man who got their point. Sudden death chase off, chase one, Tempest evading. Athletes ready! Longest evasion wins. How long can Kai Baldwin last? He starts under the mountain. He's hiding behind the tilted cube. Oh, threatens to go around, and he's wasting time here. Oh, oh. he's just wasting time. But in the end, he tried to go across the quad. It's high risk, but.
but he got caught out. We've got to wait for the official time and what he has set so flow to winning. I was honestly thinking maybe that was too much hesitation. 9.1 seconds. It's competitive, but it could have been so much better. Who do you make as favorite now, so flow or Tempest Joe? I got to go with so flow. I think it's so difficult to get this tag in less than 10 seconds. Athletes ready! Joe Onra must go straight at him and he must make the tag. He has got less than... Oh boy, oh boy, what? And he's got out of the quad! He has scared him out of the quad and then got back up to make the tag. I have never seen anything like it. I cannot believe that. Joe Onra said, I need to hit this tag now. Here we can see it. He full sends through the tilted cube, scares him so bad, he falls out of the ring. I have never... I have seen dramatic things in Sudden Death Chaser, but I have never seen a bearded man fly through the air like a missile and scare somebody fully out of the quad. Astonishing stuff, but it means Tempest win in Southern Death to get the Pan Am Championships underway. What a start, Joey. That was incredible. A first for World Chase Tag, a Brazilian team competing in the tournament. They brought the flag with them. They're from Sao Paulo, they're from Rio de Janeiro. They have an incredible skill set. But this quad has humbled many a great athlete before. But these guys have raised the bar for this sport, Apex. It is their sister team, Apex Moon, who are US champions and have never been beaten. Apex Sun have also never been beaten, apart from when they play Apex Moon. And they ain't here at the Pan American Championship. Are they rightly the favorites? Are they rightly the top seeds, Joey? I think you'd be a fool to bet against them. That's all I can say. I'm putting them top seed. They are my favorites to win it. But there can always be upsets. There can be upsets, but this would be the upset of all upsets if the Brazilian Ten team can shock seconds. Apex Sun. Volts versus Apex Sun. Chase one, Apex Sun evading. Athletes ready! It is Santos Soronos who's going to get us underway, and it's just a casual little duck under the mountain, and then under the ridge, and back under the ridge again, and a third time, why not? And just grasping at air, the vaults number 10, with the tag made by the front line, where there's not a great deal to hide behind, Joey. Not much at all there by the front line, and uh, I really enjoyed that tag. There was a little bit of reverse hurting there from Apex, but Volts wasn't having any of that. Athletes ready! D'Artagnan Souza, known as Darta, former pro volleyball player in Brazil. And off he goes up the mountain, but he doesn't even get halfway up because Bear Schneider grabs him. Bear loves that tactic, getting inside the loading bay and just making noise with his feet, making them take off fast. Chase three, Apex Sun evading, zero all. Athletes ready! In comes Hugo Laloni. They're unknown quantities, a lot of these Brazilian players. It's going to be interesting seeing how they deal with the team to be. Bear Snyder just tapping, tapping away on the tilted cube. Come and get me, he says. He tried, he can't, and bears away under the mountain. And he's still not putting on the jets because he's just controlling that gap, and he controls it perfectly. Tap, tap, tapping all the way into the lead. So calm, so controlled, relaxed. Maybe he took, what, 15 steps that entire time? I wouldn't be surprised if he's setting up for a second evasion here. Athletes ready! Ricardo Farias into the action as Bear. Oh, nice! Someone even taunts as he goes cross quad. Bear Schneider is playing this entire match in second gear and he's not looking in trouble. It is an absolute lesson in efficiency, efficient use of energy. Because Ricardo is running and running around and Bear is strolling to points at the minute. Honestly, this is where things start to get a little bit unfair. These more experienced teams have trigger points. As soon as things happen, they know exactly where to go. And Bear right there played his trigger points absolutely perfectly. Athletes ready! In comes the team captain Ian Fortuna, former circus performer. What tricks has he got up his sleeve? Well, turns out he can tame a bear. He's the only one who's managed to do it so far. Strategy or not, you're gonna run out of gas eventually. That was a quick tag, so now we're really gonna see what's happening with Bolts and if they can get this evasion. Athletes ready! 
Reaching a third away through this match. 2-0 to the number one seeds. And in comes their captain, Devin. Looking to track down the opposition captain. And Ian is running around in that open space by the front line. It looked like he might get away with it for a moment. But Devin turning on a dime to come back and grab it. Again, Devin just showing so much experience. You saw once he got on that front line, he had absolutely no plan on making the tag. He was waiting for the turnaround and waiting for a better opportunity. Athletes ready! In comes Vance, martial artist, numerous competition winner in martial arts. What has he got here to try and stop Devin? Well, at the minute, he's running around the outside of the quad and over the mountain, really nicely done. Drops into the tilted cube and stops and waits, because he can wait there. He can wait there for as long as you like. And Vance finally makes a move to flush him out, but Devin's already gone. A real mix, some athleticism, a bit of speed, but then also smart play, wasting time. Yeah, I would love to uh, get deeper on this, but realistically, it's very unfortunate that Bolts' first match is against Apex Sun. The, the favorites coming in here, because this is looking a little bit rough. Athletes ready! Now Devin looking to extend the lead to four, and what you can see there, I think Devin has made the move. Dart has already figured he's gonna go in the center of the quad, and it just burned through some seconds. The dive comes, it never looked like he was in position to make contact, and he's struggling here, Darta, to find a way to catch catch Devon anywhere because another dive happens, and it was ne he never got within striking distance at any point in that. Devon that entire time was two full steps ahead. He was making perfect hurting decisions as soon as they went over his trigger point. He was just moving to the next space. I think he's getting tired, though. I'd be surprised if he gets another one. Athletes ready! Well, just a reminder that in a 16-chase game, you're not going to see any bigger defeats than 8 nothing. But that could yet happen in this one, as Devin just avoids the hand. And I think, has he let himself get caught there? I think his legs were given out a little bit. To be fair, I think he knew he made a mistake. When you're feeling tired, one of the worst things that you can do is cut straight across open ground. The guy with the strong legs, he's going to catch you. Athletes ready! Apex Sun, incredible team, very settled roster, but this is their new guy, Zeke. A former front man in a metal band, and rocks in Fortuna with that one down by the loading bay. I would have loved to see just a little bit more from Zeke there. I want to see what this guy's like. It's a big question mark. We know the rest of Apex Sun. We're not sure about Zeke. Athletes ready! Well, Zeke to win it, the new guy sets off under the mountain and to the tilted cube. Hugo is trying to find a way to create an opportunity. Just about keeps his footing, but Zeke's the other side of the quad. And now there's the little taunting and the little shimmering of the feet. And he sets off across the quad and that is game over. That is an absolute battering for the Brazilians. We knew they were up against it. They're brand new to this game. They're going up against the title favorites. And Zeke has just completely kept a, a great start to the tournament for Apex Sun. Yeah, that was beautiful work. What I want to see Volts do is I want them to go watch the replays, watch some tape. Hopefully they had somebody filming in the crowd. I want to have them learn some lessons from this and see how they come back next time. We're excited to go against Apex. In the last competition, we held them neck and neck with pretty much just myself, Raul, and Jonathan. The gap is definitely closing. There's quads popping up. People are getting more experience in the sport, more experience with competitions. The intensity of the sport is definitely increasing, and it's really exciting. They know what they're doing. They own their own quad. They're on it day in, day, day out. That's something that you can't fake in almost any sport is experience. You can't fake it, you can't buy it. They either have it or, you, or they don't, and they have it. Athletes ready! Apex sending in Damien, their man with a hockey background, as Raul Muniz is the man he's going to have to track, and Raul was hiding under the ridge, decided to make a move, and Damien was just sat there waiting to look which way he went. Yeah, once you get on top of the ridge, the main kind of meta point is trying to cut back and make you basically fall off the ridge. If you're just patient and you wait, that pretty much counters it. Great work from Damien. Tony, the team captain coming in, it's only 18 months ago that he did his ACL, a particularly nasty injury to come back from, so it's good to see him competing. But how will he compete here against Damien? 
who goes over the sisters, over the front line, there's the pace to get away. Do not want to be hanging around in that open space, but here you can hang around a bit. Chooses not to, goes under the ridge, and that's the first point. Apex Sun start as they mean to go on, get the tag, then get an evasion. Yeah, something that all chasers are trying to do is create interactions. And it didn't look like there was a single realistic interaction that entire time. And that is a shout out to Damien's skill right there. Athletes ready! Soflo sending Jonathan Alfonseca, who is small but really powerful. Really took exception to being called the noisy cricket last time out by me, so I've got a whole load more for you. Uh, the mighty mouse, the heroic homunculus, the tiny mini muscle man makes his move and gets the tag. Great pressure put on there from Jonathan. He stayed close, had a few solid chances, and that just threw Damien out of his game. Coming over here, he tries to just speed under the mountain, and it looked like, oh, he just caught a leg there. Athletes ready! Good matchup, this. Max Boyce coming in. Jonathan Alfonseca goes over the sisters. You can see that sort of explosion of power and pace because he manages to turn a couple of times, but in the end, Max is just shot in down the angles. And I, it's one of those things when you're watching, you don't really get how much patience you have to have when somebody's coming along the front line to just stay on top and not commit until you know you're going to get the tag. Athletes ready! Gabriel Torres, a lot of padding on the knees, a lot of padding on the head, but that's hair as he traces down Max Boyce. Jumps over the front line, nice foot placement on the bar, and he needed all that speed to just evade that flailing hand from Gabriel Torres, but he couldn't do it, it would seem. Cozy, our head ref, has given the tag, but I'm not sure. Maybe he was a bit quick to go there, Cozy, because both of them look a little bit puzzled. Yeah, they both look very confused here. It looked to me like he caught maybe a sleeve on that first attempt. He definitely got him on the second one, but the lights had already gone off, and did that play a big factor? I think our ref might have jumped the gun here. You can see this flailing shirt from Max as he heads over towards the ridge there so hard to tell if he made contact or not, but from the way that both athletes took off afterwards, it seemed like neither one of them thought the tag was made. Are they rerunning the chase? Okay. Okay. I, I think that's about as fair as it goes. Zero, Apex Sun. Athletes ready! So it's a do-over. This is not deja vu, but we do still have Gabriel chasing down Max and a little bit of showboat in there. They're both fresh after that extended DTR, and that helps both of them. So maybe it cancels each other out as Gabriel tries to thread his way through. The limbs were unfolding, but his arm couldn't make contact. No DTR needed, no contact made. That is an evasion. It's 2-0 Apex. Oh, man, and you could see right here going across the front line. He went for the dive tactic doing everything he could to catch that flailing foot, just not able to get fingertips on this time. Athletes ready! Max looking to double up. It's Josh Vigo who's trying to track him down, a two-time Ninja Warrior competitor in the States. And he hops up and down over the front line, but kind of gets stuck under the sisters. And Max is happy to waste a bit of time. And they Benny Hill around the Tilter Cube. And the dive is made. We've got one ref saying tag, one ref saying no. In the end, it's a 2-1 two, two, decision in the ref, so they've given the tag. All right, here we go to the replay. We might be able to see a better view of this tag. There it is. I think it just caught the back of his, well, the back of his butt, really. Athletes ready! In comes Devin, team captain for Apex, and off. The number three goes Josh Vigo, but he doesn't go there quickly enough because Devin cuts him off. Man, Devin is one of the smoothest, fastest movers I have ever seen. And with a full lungs of breath, I think he's got a good chance to get an evasion here. Zero, Apex Sun. Well, in comes Raul. He's the man who got the point for SoFlo in their opening game, that agonizing defeat to Tempest. Devin. A man who picked up two points in their opener. He's 
looking to add to that tally, but he won't do because that's a lovely move through the bars there. Incredible thread from Raul. Now, you'll start to see this more and more from these athletes as they get more comfortable with it. But for anybody at home, that is about a foot and a half gap between two metal bars. It is horrifying to go to at that speed. Athletes ready! Apex Sun are still yet to concede an evasion in this tournament. And that continues with the Bear getting his man over here by the ring. Man, something that I've noticed from Bear, usually he's a little bit more lighthearted. In this competition, he is out for blood. He is not playing around. He really wants this dub. Since Apex Moon is not here, he wants Apex Sun to take it home. Athletes ready! Bear now looking to add to his points tally for the tournament after picking up a couple in their opener. Some jittery leg stuff. That's a bit of an apex trademark that's been adopted by a lot of teams nowadays. But then he needs to put the speed on, and he does, and there's a dive made by Tony, putting his body on the line. This is a man who suffered some serious injuries in the past, but he's willing to go there again to get the tag, and it works. Man, that's a scary one. It was still early on in the chase, but he decided as he goes on the front line, I'm going all or nothing for this dive, and it pays off there. But if it didn't, man, Bear had a big lead. Athletes ready! In comes Santos, a man who's had injury problems of his own, but he's fully fit for this one, and that is an exciting prospect, because this guy is a serious tag athlete, and that is a lovely move, catching his man by the tilt of Q. Yeah, you said it, such a smart move. He sees his man go down underneath the mountain. He knows he's cutting over to the tilted cube. Santos just gets on top and cuts off all options right here. Unless he cuts back, it's game over. Beautiful dive tag. Apex, uh, athletes ready! Wow, that's just enough for Apex with Apex, because Michaela, who's been training with Apex, based up in Denver, played on their quads, can she use some of that Apex knowledge to track down Santos? And you can see she is quick and she moves, just like she could be part of this Apex team. And look at that, she nearly looked like she crafted the chance and couldn't take it. That was the moment, wasn't it, Joey? It looked like she'd done all that hard work, couldn't finish it off. Without a doubt, and this is something where as a chaser, it can be so scary to do. You want to lead with your feet, so it's the first thing to hit the ground and you keep running. Right there, if Michaela had led with her hand, right here coming around towards the ridge, if she had just full committed with the hand, I think that was the tag. Match points, Apex Sun. Athletes ready! Apex Sun looking to win it right now. After a 5-0 opening win, this would make it 4-0, but Santos has to evade for that to happen. Jonathan Alfonseca is quick, and he's too quick on this occasion for Santos Torones. Jonathan has so much work ahead of him. He has to get three evades back to back. He was able to get a quick tag here on the front line, just sprinted his man down, ripped around the lazy boy and hit the tag. Athletes ready! Well, Zeke, the new guy, got the job done in their opening game. He's given that chance to do so again, and it's the perfect way to blood one of their new members when they've got this cushion in both games. Can he finish it off here, Zeke? Reaches through and doesn't make contact there, but he feels like he had his man right by the sisters, and the dive through the lazy boy doesn't work. And now he has to make a go, and he just ran out of opportunities. Maybe he could have had a dive through the ridge, but it would have been a small, small chance of success. As you said, that's something that I would have loved to see because all these athletes have a bit of an internal timer when that 20 seconds is up. He must have known it was close. He should have sent the dive at the end just for that last ditch effort, but maybe not worth the risk being up this many points. That being said, great evasion from Jonathan. He might be able to get another one. Athletes ready! Well, SoFlo have managed to get on the board, and this game isn't over, but Jonathan Alfonseca has only done a little bit of the huge amount of work he has to do, and Damien drops down from on high to end this one. It's a 3-1 win for Apex. Well, astonishingly, after just two games, Apex Sun have ensured that every single player has got on the quad and every single player has got at least one evasion. That's what makes this team the top seeds and title favorite. Oh, there's a kiss! <laughs>
The Brazilians are here for the first time in World Chase Tag. It was a baptism of fire against the number one seed Apex Sun in their opener. It should, in theory, get a little easier, but nothing is easy in this Group A for the newcomers. Well, maybe this is a sign of tactics from Tempest. They send in Brett Vance, who did not get on the quad in their opening match. Trying to chase down Ian, the team captain for the Brazilians, and Brett sets off after him. It's under the front line from Ian, and he hops into the tilted cube, and he's done really nicely there. And I thought for a little moment he might just pull that off and get their first point in the tournament. And even Brett acknowledges he gave him a run for his money. Yeah, I think both were pretty stressed out there. I thought the tag was going to happen through here, and when it didn't, he had to be sweating. Chase two, Tempest evading, zero all. Ready. In comes Data, D'Artagnan Sosa. Who's relied on heavily in their opening game, but they were struggling to be in it against Apex. And Brett was bouncing off the platforms there, and he lost his footing. He expected to be tagged. He probably had a little bit more time than he thought, but not enough time, turns out. Yeah, it looked like Brett had something in mind, and then he just missed his steps a little bit, ended up falling down onto that. D'Artagnan did great staying on top of him, and when the mistake was made, he got the tag. Athletes ready! Up steps Hunter, committed. A real firecracker of a chase tag. Actually, had to go off to the emergency room with a busted head last time we saw him play. And it was a little bit too intense for D'Artagnan. Yeah, right there you could see D'Artagnan was just kind of waiting for something to happen. He thought he knew when his trigger point was, and when it came, he just kind of second-guessed himself one too many times, making the easy tag for Hunter. Athletes ready! Hunter, this might be where he can really shine. He is very, very quick. He is a difficult man to get hold of. And he goes all the way around and keeps on going. And there's a little hop over the sisters, but he acknowledges the tag was made. Hugo got him. That right there, I'm starting to learn a little bit. Had he gone out onto the rails of the sisters, it might have given him just enough distance to not get tagged there. You're coming round to this using the rails and the sisters thing, aren't you, Joey? I'm starting to think maybe it's a tactic. Athletes ready! Kai Baldwin, operatic performer, tap dancer, Australian, and one heck of a tagger, it turns out. Set a beautiful trap there, Kai. Just creeps up that diagonal bar, gets his feet solidly planted inside of the tilted cube, and from there, there's nowhere to go. Zero. Athletes ready! Bit of vocal encouragement from the Brazilian teammates as Ricardo steps onto the quad and he nearly catches himself on that platform by the mountain, but Kai is off. And he has been very, very impressive from what we've seen so far. And he just shapes one by lovely vault through the mountain as if it was not there. And it is again turning into a race around the outside, but this time he cuts across and again he vaults over something as if it's not there. He just moves, flows like water. That's the first point of this contest. Man, I love to see that. We already know Kai has great tactics, but he can put the power in when it's needed and really speed through this course at will. Tempest evading. 1-0, Tempest. Athletes ready! Big deep breaths from Kai Baldwin at the base of the mountain. Just some shoulder movement to try and suggest he might go another way. And Data makes the dive. He slams his face off the sideboard, but contact was made. Yes, I love to see that leading with the arm, saying I am getting this tag, whether it costs me a shoulder or not. <laughs> Athletes ready! In comes Hunter again. Maybe Tempest are looking to play this game with just half their roster, a bit like they did in their opener. Keep people fresh for the games to come. And that suggests that they think there could be a lot of games to come because Hunter Peyton Mendoza tracks his man down over by the front line. He was going and going and going. The arm was going out. He couldn't quite get there. And maybe the third or fourth time, he did get him. Yeah, look there. I like to see that. D'Artagnan had a strategy. It ended up paying off for him very, very well until he he got to the center of the course, and then he just didn't know where to go from there. Athletes ready! Hunter looking to get 
his first point of the tournament. Ian Fortuna drops into the tilt to Cuban. Lovely moving across the platforms there to keep in close attendance. Mahunter's just been a little bit too quick, and you can see why. As he races around that front line, and he's there again, and Ian is hopping back and forth and struggling to find a way to make a move. And in the end, the move came. It was too late. The light was green before he even got over the ridge. There were about two chances where it looked like if he had full scent, he may have gotten the tag. But as the chaser, it's so hard to know exactly when you can get it and when maybe you're just throwing your body away for nothing. Athletes ready! Hugo comes back in with Hunter looking to go back to back and increase this lead for Tempest. It was a, a tight one in the opening stages, but they might be pulling away here as Hunter turns around only to find Hugo on top of him. I like that work from Hugo there. He went for the one chance over at the Tilted Cube, decided, all right, this isn't going to be it, took center control, waited for his next one, got it there. Tempest, come on to chase. So what happened to your ear, and how is that impacting your gameplay? So uh, in the new chase tag rules, if I wear earbuds when I run, so if they fall out and someone gets a tag on it, it counts as a tag against me. So what we've done is we put uh, athletic tape over it to make sure it holds in. Kind of hurts when I take it off, but uh, it's just to make sure that we don't have unnecessary tags. Tempest evading, 2-0, Tempest. Athletes ready! Up steps Vance from Rio de Janeiro. And he goes underneath that bar by the ridge. Sean striding over the mountain and then can sit and wait. But off he goes again, and it's those big, long legs just making pretty big obstacles seem absolutely tiny. He's like running around a model village here, Sean Nirenberg. But has he got enough pace to get away? And that was almost more impressive. He makes those big obstacles look small, but then he finds a way to thread through that gap in the mountain and not lose any speed as well. Yeah, absolutely solid work from Sean. He needed to make that thread through the mountain. Otherwise, I think the chaser had enough to make that dive tag. Match point, Tempest. Athletes ready! So Sean looking to win it here. D'Artagnan moves into the center of the quad, stamps on one side of the ridge to flush him out, and Sean again going over the mountain, and D'Artagnan is racing around and gets the tag. Real commitment there. He was desperate to make sure he got a chance. D'Artagnan's been on the course quite a bit. I know his stamina's got to be hurting just a little bit from it. That said, the type of runner it looks like he is, I think he's going to do better evading because he gets to choose his own path. Match point, Tempest. Athletes ready! In comes the captain, Nicodemus, to try and finish this off. He has been doing hundreds and hundreds of threads through gaps like that. Maybe he needed a few more because he keeps bouncing off bars here. And they'll be a bit sore, those ones. Nice foot placement to stay on the bars there. And it means that he's got a chance to make the tag in the tilted cube, because D'Artagnan needed to actually vault over him if he was to get away. <laughs> yeah. And that's not a great strategy. Yep, nowhere for D'Artagnan to go there. Great work. I think that was the first time we saw Nico on the course, right? Yep. All right, he comes in clutch, gets the tags, and gets Tempest through the game. 3-0 for Tempest, they won against SoFlo, needed sudden death. But it was a little bit more comfortable this time. Always wise to avoid a close shave where a Brazilian's concerned. It was very, very nice to share the quad with Tempest team. We, we got a lot of information, a lot of feedback from them. We definitely felt that we had a chance. Yeah. Yes. yes. But we still did it. Whoa. The Florida outfit, they have to win this game. Whether it's an outright victory or a sudden death win, that's enough to get through to the playoffs. If they lose, they're going home. We come to the crunch then. Win through to the playoffs, lose, and you are out at the bottom of the group. And it's Raul Muniz and Data Sosa, the two players that these teams have leaned on perhaps most heavily over the course of this Pan American Championship. And Raul Muniz is going round the quad. There's a dive through the ridge from Data, but he doesn't make it. And he's taken a long time to recover, and he's just kind of given up. He just resigned himself. If I wasn't going to get you there, I'm not going to get you at all. Yeah, that looked like a heavy hit from Darta trying to go through the ridge, through those steel bars, wasn't able to make it. Aside from that, I don't love the strategy sending out what I would argue is their best man first. I would send him in second after the guy's tired. Athletes running! 
Well, so Flo getting an evasion, as they've done in their two previous games. Unfortunately, they couldn't convert them into victories. Can Real Muniz give them a real lightning start in this one? Some nice movement over by the ridge, forcing his man Hugo to try and make a move, and he isn't able to do it. And Real Muniz is looking good for another point here. Under the mountain, round by the loading bay, and there was a dive from Hugo, but it was a desperate stuff one. He just couldn't find a way to create an opportunity. That was just a show on exactly how to use the ridge right there. Hugo was not flushing Raul out. Raul noticed that, and he said, I'm going to spend as much time as you will allow me to. Athletes ready! Team captain for Volt, CM Fortuna, comes in looking to stop Raul Moniz, who just slips by him around the tilter cube and heads to the ridge, where he wasted so much time last time. Ian does not let him do that this time around. So he forces him out, and he's forcing Raul, who is just keeping an eye on his man. And now he's wasting time, and he'll be happy to as Ian drops into the loading bay, can't reach his man. It's a lead-off hat-trick. Raul Moniz is dominating this contest. Man, Raul is looking so, so solid. He is just preying on Boltz's lack of knowledge of the quad. It looked like everything was going well for Ian, but then he got lost right on the mountain. Raul Moniz threatening to run through this Brazilian team on his own at the minute. And he sets off, scrambles under the sisters. Ricardo is after him, has to do a 180 to come back to get his man. And Raul is happy to just jog and conserve that energy, but he needs a bit of speed here because Ricardo is on his tail and there's a slap there. I didn't think it made contact. I think Raul kind of knew the contact was coming, though. Yeah, you said it. Raul knew he was running out of stamina there. And who wouldn't be after three straight evasions? Volts really has to get something on the board starting now, or it's looking grim. Three nil down already, Volts, and it's looking like dire straits as in comes Jonathan Alfonseca. Lovely little foot placement there on the bars. Gets his man out of that corner, but he can't force an opportunity by the loading bay. Goes to the center of the quad to try and create another chance, and he's not able to do it, because this is decent from Ricardo. but Jonathan puts on the Jets and does manage to get him. And I tell you what, I don't know how long was left in that chase, but I reckon it was only a second or two. So Ricardo was actually showing a great deal of patience right at the beginning. Jonathan able to run him down once it came to the straights. This Bolt team just keeps getting trapped under the mountain. You had three evasions. How do you feel? I'm really tired. <laughs> I worked on timing a lot and route planning and strategy, and it prevailed. It prevailed. Good job. Well, these Brazilians will not want to go out of this tournament without getting a single evasion, but at the minute, it is looking like that could happen. As Alfonseca, nice little bisection of the sisters there, and under the ridge, wasting a bit of time, a bit like Raul Moniz was doing earlier in this one. He's got some speed as Jonathan Alfonseca, and he sends his man the wrong way around the lazy boy. And he doesn't even need to pull out another move because he gets through the 20 and extends their lead to four. This is something that Jonathan must know. He knows newer teams love these straightaways. They want to use their power to just gun it. But if you can time your turnbacks perfectly, that's going to throw them off every time, as you see here at the lazy boy. Ready. Well, the points that Soflo have been getting in this tournament are coming exclusively from Raul Muniz and Jonathan Alfonseca, and that has continued in this contest against Volt. But Data has perhaps been the standout player on this Brazilian team, and he does get the tag just before Jonathan disappears under the ridge. Relatively quick tag here. Now, even though we are not even halfway through our chases, there is such a large lead from Soflo. Oh, we made it. 4 0. So Athletes ready! Well, we have got a dedicated women's event here at the Pan American Championship in Ohio, but Michaela is the only female competing in the Open tournament, and she's got some skills. She has so, so much strategy behind her. Her threads are amazing, and her strategy was perfect there. Fake him out one way, and then get the easy tag on the open side of Tilted Cube. Athletes ready! Now, can Michaela get her first evasion on the board? Vance coming in to try and track her down. Scurries under the ridge and has a think about where to go, and he reaches out and he's grasping at thin air. He can't get hold of her. So she moves back across and under the ridge to just wrap her up before she can get away. 
Man, for one second there, I thought she was gone after that Lazy Boy interaction. She was able to just turn the tides. You can see here, she comes up. I thought he was going to catch her. Does a really smart play by cutting back towards center, making him cut instead of using that power. But he gets a beautiful slide underneath the ridge. Athletes ready! Vance, could he get Vaults their first evasion in World Chase Tag history? The answer is no, because Josh Vigo, the man from Jacksonville, has really powered through that chase. Yeah, realistically, it just looks like Josh has practiced that slide a little more often. He comes through with so much more momentum than Vance could generate. Athletes ready! Well, this would wrap it up and seal a spot in the playoffs for the Florida team. Josh Vigo going under the mountain and waits and now goes under the ridge. All the way around the front line. In Fortuna not tailing him, trying to find an opportunity, not given the tag there. It looked like he was just a sitting duck, but Josh Vigo had the speed to get out of that problem. And they have got out of a problem here, this Florida team, because they do book their place in the playoffs. Their Pan American Championships isn't over yet. Yet. And who knows, maybe they could have a deep run after a disappointing start to the tournament. A first appearance for Brazil in World Chase Tag. It did not go according to plan, but hopefully they'll be back to seek some redemption. Yeah, we are just really bad doing Chase Tags now, but I think that in a few months we will be really good because we will have a fight. Be careful, okay, that. Wait for be careful. Yeah. We'll be yeah. here again. You will come back. Yeah. Even stronger, you, you'll hear from Volt Parkour again. Yeah. Yeah. The number one seeds and title favorites have been pretty impressive so far, only dropping one evasion as they picked up two wins out of two, but that's kind of what we expected. Yeah, I think this is going to be their first real test for this tournament, going up against this new and improved Tempest squad. Athletes This is a straight shootout to top the group. The winner finishes top, goes straight through to the quarterfinals. The loser finishes second and has to go into the playoffs. And Kai Baldwin, oh, slams into the sisters, but bounces off it like a rubber ball and attempts the move again, but this time gets it right to go over and under. And Santos is trying to get there. There's a dive and a swing. He's not going to get there. And that's a lead-off <laughs> point for Kai Baldwin. This new Australian talent, a new addition to Tempest, somehow gets away under the mountain and gets them on the board. Incredible composure from Kai there. I thought for sure he was going to get run down under the mountain, but he was able to hit that speed ball through the bars over the top and just able to escape Santos. Athletes ready! First blood to Tempest. Team captain Nicodemus really giving some encouragement to Kai as he chitters around by the loading bay. He turns back, but Bear Schneider reaches out one of those long limbs and just almost grabs a tuft of hair before he gets away under the ridge. Such smart work from uh, Bear there. He decides, OK, you're going behind the ridge. I'm just going to get position on the square to the left of it. Once I'm there, you're kind of got nowhere to go. Zero, Athletes ready! In comes Joe Unruh, a man who literally scared a man out of the quad to win in sudden death in their opening game. And I tell you what, that was pretty scary stuff as well. Bear could not get away. That was great work from Joe. But on the other hand, I think it was just a lapse in judgment from Bear. He moved too early, and he went exactly where Joe wanted him to go. 1-0, Tempest. Athletes ready! Well, it just feels like this game is perhaps the most intense we've seen in this group so far. The two big guns in this group going head to head for top spot. And there's a little slip there from Joe, but he might get away with it. And Damien, just as it slips as well, he vaults through the mountain as Joe had gone over it. And he's just scrambling to try and get the tag. And he does get him on the sisters. But if he hadn't got him there, I think that would have been another point for Tempest. It looked like it to me, but Damien, with such quick reaction times, Joe was looking really good at selling one direction and then going the other. Damien even fell to his knees, but was able to get up fast enough to make that tag before he gets over the sisters. Athletes ready! Into chase five, and Apex Sun find themselves in the rare position of trailing in a game of chase tag. And Hunter Peyton Mendoza looking to use all that speed. It is turning into a race here. 
and it is a race that Hunter wins because he's going to win most of them. It may not be the most strategic, it may be a bit of a blunt instrument, but I tell you what, it's an effective instrument if Hunter's chasing you. You are absolutely right. When you're that fast, trailing isn't always the worst strategy. Oh, now, hang on, hang on. Ooh, I think they They're might have something They're claiming a DTR. Here. Now, they've looked back at the replay on the big screen. Hunter seemed absolutely convinced that the tag was made. And all of a sudden, Apex had looked at it on the big screen and gone, I'm not sure there was contact. I'm not sure either. It looked like foot made contact. I didn't see the hand. We'll have to see it, have a closer look here. Does he get a piece of him with his hand? The tag has to be made with the yes. hand. Oh, yes, yes he does. Yes, definitely does. Yes, he does. So tag made, and not only that, because the call has gone Tempest way, Hunter has made the tag and has a bit more time to just compose and get some more air in the lungs. This extra 45 seconds for Hunter is going to mean so, so much. This, at this point, I think Apex Sun starts to sweat a little bit. Athletes ready! In comes Devin, the team captain for Apex Sun, the number one seeds and favorites for the title. Remember, a team that has never been beaten other than by the other Apex team who aren't here. And there's a real little scramble under the bar from Hunter Payton Mendoza. High risk maneuver. We saw Frank Mejia do that really well, but not going out into open space, was he? I think he made the right move, but it wasn't even necessarily a mess up from Hunter. It was just patience from Devin. He knew once I get to that table by the ridge, I just need to stay and wait. Athletes ready! In comes Kai again, this new addition to the Tempest team from Australia. And look at that, using a bit of his tap dancing skills there, a little bit of a dance move from Kai. And he just sort of decides to stop tailing and come back into the centre of the quad to then try and get a better opportunity. There's a lot of speed, there's a lot of talent there, but there's some nous as well, Joey. Yeah, that was amazing strategy there from Kai. He knows exactly what to do on the loading bay to put his opponent off. The loading bay is a horrible spot to be, especially where Kai was. Then at the end, cuts to the straightaway for the tag. Athletes ready! In comes Bear again. One of their go-to guys if they need a tag but they do really need a tag here, and that doesn't actually come. Somehow, Kai is ghosting his way past these attempts to stop him, but he's not getting out of that one. I don't know how many times you roll around. Yeah, not much Kai could do there. He obviously lost his footing. I think he was getting tagged in that open side of the Tilted Cube no matter what. In my opinion, he's got to just gun it and hope Bear misses the dive. Apex Sun evading 1-0 Tempest. Athletes ready! We're only halfway through this match. It's not panic stations for Apex yet, but it could get that way if Joe Onra can get the tag on Bear, and he does not manage it over by the Lazy Boy. Can he get him by the ridge? Bear waits, waits, asks him to come for him. Oh, my! Oh, he has reached <laughs> around the ridge. It's the Joe Onra reach around, and I don't think Bear appreciated it. That was absolutely all or nothing from Joe. He was wasting too much time there. He managed to get his chest through the bars, and he had to make that dive the exact moment he did, or it was over. First look at Max Boyce in this contest, and boy, do they need him, Apex Sun. Joe Unruh shapes and goes, and there's a dive over the sisters, and he does make contact, and it's a quick tag. It's a fresh Max Boyce who's looking to get Apex back on level terms. That was an incredibly confident dive from Max. I didn't think he was going to make it. He just barely got tips on it. Looked like a little stumble in the beginning. I thought the nerves were getting to him. After that tag, he's got to be feeling good, though. Athletes ready! Tempest keep going back to Kai Baldwin, Hunter Payton Mendoza, and Joe Onra. Are they the power three as Max Boy seems to power into a bar there? But he keeps on going. But look at that! Hunter would not be denied! Hunter is looking like an absolute animal out there right now. He must be tired after that. He, like you said, he's been out on the quad a few times already in just this game alone. You said their first couple of games, they were just using half their team. They're only using half their team here against the number one team in this tournament. Devin, team captain, back in. He came into good effect earlier on and got the tag. He needs to get the tag now. Apex are in trouble, but... Ooh, 
Well, no, I think he's acknowledging it. I thought he was celebrating there for a moment, Hunter, but I think he was just acknowledging the tag, mate. Yeah, I think you're right. It was a great maneuver there from Devin. He was starting to stumble, and so as a last-ditch effort, he was like, okay, this is my chance. I got to utilize it as best as I can with the dive. Athletes ready! Tempest took the lead in the very first chase of this match, and they are not relinquishing it. It remains 1-0, and Apex Sun, the top seeds, are on the ropes. Now, that looks bad there. What Devin was trying to do, he was trying to sell the fact he was going towards the ridge, make Kai dive through, then cut back. Kai did not fall for it. It is match point to Tempest. At least ready! Damien needs to get the tag, or Apex Sun will lose a chase tag for the first time to a team that isn't another Apex team. There's a stumble from Damien, and Kai has already gone. The Australian is over the sisters to the tilt to cube. He comes across. Why didn't you do it? Why? Why, Kai Baldwin? Why? That right there, you ask why. Viewers at home got to be asking why. I know exactly why. He is tired. He's been using so much energy. The brain starts to go. One fumble is made, and then you just go with it. You're on instinct instead of thinking. Match point, Tempest. Athletes ready! Joe Unra. If he makes the tag, they beat Apex Sun, the title favorites, the top seeds. He can't quite get on the sisters. He bounces off a bar. Joe Unruh, it's intense, but it's not quite precise. He's not getting anything quite right, but he could get it right. No, he's got it wrong again. Damien might level this game up here, and it's panic. It is panic from Joe Unruh. It's all gone wrong at the death for Tempest. You said it perfectly. That was pure panic. Joe said, I need to go out there and make this tag happen. He was not poised. He was not in control. He just got too ahead of himself. Too much power, not enough thought process. Well done from Damien. Apex Sun have trailed for 14 chasers, but they might win it in the last chase of the match. They're sending in Kai again. Athletes ready! This would be an astonishing turnaround. The top seeds, Damien Zuntemo looking to go back to back and win this match 2-1, but Kai will not let him! He finishes one apiece, and now we go to sudden death. <laughs> oh, man, this is one of the most exciting matches I have seen so far. These two matchups are insane, but the later it goes, the more tired Tempest must be feeling. They're only using a fraction of their squad where Apex is using everyone except Zeke so far. That means they must be feeling a lot better as far as legs and stamina goes. Remember, it is longest evasion wins, and Kai Baldwin, there is so much being placed on the shoulders of this young man, a new team and member. Santos Torona has to set the bar that Apex will hope will be too high for Tempest. Kai makes a move, does not get there, and that means it's valuable extra seconds. Santos Torones through the mountain again, this time going underneath it, and I'm not sure Kai is going to get there. He does make the tag, but it's about 16 or 17 seconds. It is a great target that Apex have set. Tempest is over there summoning what looked like a spirit bomb, trying to help their main man Kai out, give him some energy, but Santos plays that so, so well. He basically trained Kai into believing, hey, I'm just running, that's all I'm going to do, and then he hits the cutback. Kai was not ready for that. We are waiting for the official time. 15.9 seconds. If he gets to 16 seconds, Hunter will help inflict the first ever defeat at Chase Tag on Apex Sun, aside from defeats to Apex Moon, the US champions. Chase 2, Tempest evading. At least ready! <laughs> Offset Devon. He's got 16 seconds with which to play. Is that going to be enough? He reaches out, and as Hunters acknowledge the tag is made, and somehow Apex have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. They trailed after the very first chase and did not level until the penultimate, the 15th chase of the match, and they have snatched it in sudden death to qualify as group winners and go through to the quarterfinals. What a contest, Joey. That was one of the craziest games we have seen, especially here at the Pan Ams.
Tempest came oh so close to causing a major shock, but they'll need to qualify through the playoffs, as will SoFlo, and both await news of whom they'll face. But for the Brazilian boys, the first time, as sadly it'll be a tournament they need to put down to experience, and I'm certain they'll come back stronger.